Hi there, welcome to the channel. Today I'm going to be talking about a performance I did recently. It was a cover of the Radiohead song Dex Dark. Which is one of my favorite tracks off of a moon-shaped pool. So I'm just going to be talking about the chord progression, the dynamics and build up, which are especially important in this song. I'm going to talk about this one part in the verse, which has an A7 chord and it hangs out there for a really long time. But I'm, I'm going to talk specifically about certain qual qualities of that A7 chord. And lastly, I'll talk about how I use the same chord voicing at the end for three chords, an A minor 7, C major 7, and E minor 7. So let's get started here. I'm, I'm excited to talk about this song with you guys. Alright, so we're going to start off by talking about the chord progression a little bit because it is kind of a unique chord progression. I'm just going to play through. It starts on this D major, but it has a B flat and a flat 7. So it's a mixolydian scale with a flat 7. So yeah, it starts off on that D7, or just D major with a flat 6. Goes B flat, G minor, D. So B flat major, G minor, D. F, B flat, A minor, D. Then back to this B flat, G minor, D major. F, B flat, A minor. heard the song you know that. So that's pretty much it because then it goes back to the verse in any old life. Sorry it goes back to the chorus. It starts on the chorus and then that long part with A7. That part is the verse and it's a very long verse. And then it goes back to the chorus about seeing the spaceship in the sky loudest sound you've ever heard, cover your ears. Yeah. 
I have a voicing I use in the right hand. It's the same voicing for all three. See how my right hand is the same? A minor, C major, E minor. So, yeah, I mean, that's pretty much it. It stays there for the rest of the time. A minor, C major, E minor. And the bass has that. And that's it. All right, so now that we've got the chord progression down, Let's talk about something interesting about this song, which I tried to replicate in my cover, and that is the dynamics. So when you talk about dynamics in music, you're talking about loudness, the degree of loudness. Is it loud or soft? And this song makes use of dynamics as well as instrumentation. I'm not sure if this falls under dynamics or it's a different term, but the song starts off soft with soft dynamics and it grows louder it gets louder in the middle and building towards the end and it also starts off with fewer instruments it starts off with um, sort of a piano riff very light and not that intense again it's soft piano drums and vocals and a few kind of bell like sound effects but um, that's pretty much it. It starts off sparse instrumentation wise. There's no bass and the drums are not that intense. So that first chorus is very soft and then the verse builds up more. Second chorus, outro. By that point, the bass has definitely come in. The bass comes in in the first verse after the chorus. You have the bass, you have a guitar riff, so the instrumentation goes from sparse and then it gets thicker and the dynamics at the same time are soft and they get louder. So I tried to replicate that in my cover by starting off, starting off soft. time you get to that A7, it has this transition where it goes B flat, B flat, A7. That whole section is like a buildup of intensity. You know, in the song, the bass has come in and the guitars and it's building intensity and it's stronger and it's louder than the beginning. So dynamics are very important in music because it, it provides contrast between soft and loud. I was reading a book recently about music recording. I've been trying to learn how to record better and it was talking about dynamics in music and it was comparing it to photography. In photography of contrast, which is the difference between light and dark. So like on the keyboard, this is a perfect example here, we have white keys and black keys. And white and black are contrast. That's the contrast right there. Black is dark, white is light. And when you put white against black, there's a contrast. And that's something in photography and video and visual art. And in music, dynamics is a similar thing. It's loud versus soft. Most songs have loud parts and soft parts. And it's that change, the changing dynamics makes for an interesting song. Likewise, you can make things loud or soft with 
instruments, if you have fewer instruments or more instruments at different points in the song. Obviously that instrumentation thing doesn't apply to the piano covers since it's just a piano, but we can still kind of think like that a little bit. But anyways, the point is dynamics are very important for making music interesting and instrumentation is important as well. So we think about loud versus soft parts as well as I also think about thick versus thin. Like when I'm thinking about the instrumentation, like, you know, if I have a six or seven note chord, like. That's very thick. But if it's only four notes. It's a lot thinner, it's more thin. So that's kind of how I think when I think about instrumentation in the song and translating it to piano, I think about thick versus thin. You know, if I go to three note chords, that's a lot more thinner and we still want Again, it's about contrast and it's about creating interesting songs. So when I did this song, I really started off nice and quiet and sparse. And I built it up in that first verse into the second chorus. So again, it starts on the chorus and that whole first chorus, I was very soft. And then into the first verse and second chorus and outro, I'm building up the intensity there. Okay, so there's two other things I want to talk about. Two other things with this recording that are noteworthy. So first of all, on the verse, when we have this A7 chord, there's something interesting about it, which I highlighted in the recording um, about a minute in. I'll play the clip here. you have it has a regular 5 but it has a flat 13 so so a regular fifth for an a7 is just an e but then it has this f here and the reason I played that in my recording is I wanted to highlight the tension of that note Now the scale that this makes, if we have a B natural and not a B flat, you could have a B flat too, maybe in there, but I'm going to do it with a B natural for now. So that scale is the fifth mode of melodic minor. So it actually comes from D melodic minor. just starting on A. Because if we were in D major, this third would be major. So you'd have, you'd have just a regular A mixolydian, which has a major six. But here, especially since we're going to this B flat, which has obviously a B flat in it, but also has this. 
F natural. It sound very weird to have the F sharp and then go. So. So I think that F, that flat 13 in that scale, or flat 6, flat 13, same thing, whatever you want to call it, is a very crucial note. So when I was doing that recording, I really wanted to highlight that. did it with the B flat. Um, I suppose you could do that too. The only difference there is that now you're doing the fifth mode of harmonic minor instead of melodic minor. So you're doing... So you could do that too probably. keep the B flat in there but I don't know I kind of like the I like the melodic minor one with the B natural that's a interesting part of this song it's also interesting that in the ver in the chorus we have a D major because we go from D major to B flat G minor it's kind of like we're doing the minor harmony. You know, if you had D minor and you went to B flat and G minor, those all come from that that uh, natural D natural minor. But instead here we have a D major and then we still do the minor harmony of the B flat G. Even this part where it goes F, B flat, A minor, but then D major. Again, the F, B flat, and A minor all come from D natural minor, but then we have a D major. I'm not sure I know how, how to explain that theoretically, honestly, if there is a theoretical explanation, but it's pretty cool to go to that major chord. It, it's really interesting, the brightness of that D major really conflicts with the dark colors of these two colors. Especially the minor four to that one. Right there is kind of bright too. But then again it's dark there. So You'll notice if you do Radiohead, they they usually have interesting chord progressions, or even if they have a chord progression that's not that interesting, they find ways to make it interesting. Uh, I noticed that with the song Nice Dream, which was a pretty, that was a cover I did recently, and that one was a pretty basic song, but it had some interesting things thrown in there. Um, Radiohead, you know, technically is progressive rock, so they do interesting, complex things sometimes, and I really like that about them. All right, the last thing I want to talk about here is in the outro section of the song. If I play it with very basic triads, it would just be A minor, C, E minor. That's the chords in that part. jazz background. I like to make things jazzy. So, you know, I'm not sure if Radiohead does seventh chords or triads or whatever there. I didn't um, listen that closely, but, you know, 
me approaching this, I would make it all seventh chords. So we could have A minor seven, C major seven, E minor seven. F natural there yeah so it is I think so these all come from C major or A minor however you want to think of it and they're very similar chords so there were to get to the point here I came up with this thing that I did on the recording I'll show you here I'll play a clip from the recording <laughs> Basically what I was doing is I found this voicing, which I think of as an inversion of E minor or C major, like a C major 7 but with the 9, so C major 7. Um, but then I also did it for the A minor, because why not, it's just the, you know, you could have this be A minor 9. But then instead of the third, you just do the fourth or the eleventh. So kind of gives it this floating quality because you still have the minor seventh, which helps determine the chord. But without the third, it kind of feels like it's floating more. So I think that's really beautiful to do that. So I just kept that voicing the whole time. kind of cool, right? To have the same voicing for three chords. So here you have it as a A minor with the 9 and 11. Basically an A sus, A minor sus. And then C, C major 9. And then just E minor 7. thing in the bass if you want. But. That was just a cool thing I came up with. Just wanted to mention that. Voicings are a world of their own, you know, so voicings are definitely worth exploring finding ways that they're interconnected or finding interesting voicings, you know, because at just adding that nine to the C major, so instead of doing it like this, like C, E, B, G, just having that D in there instead of the C makes that voicing so much more interesting. And same thing with the A minor, you know, this voicing is one I'll still do, of course, just a regular A minor 9. With the A in the bass, C, E, B, G in the right hand. But just changing that C to the D there makes it so much more interesting. I'm not saying I'm going to do this all the time now instead of this, but it's good to find to make interesting voicings like that, especially if you can take a block chord like that and make it just a little less straight and a little more interesting, a little more out, a little more modern. 
So if you're still watching this, you've made it to the end of the video. Thank you for sticking around. I hope you got something useful out of this. I hope it was informative, educational, and that you can take some of these concepts that I talked about into your own playing, whether it's on piano or another instrument. I just appreciate you spending time here. Thank you so much, and I'll see you next time.